Amazing news! Just after the excitement of a major presidential election, SpaceX has delivered a fantastic update. The official schedule for Flight 6 is here. This upcoming launch date holds significant meaning, and the mission will bring some exciting new features. This progress is especially pivotal as China ramps up its own ambitious steps in the lunar race, intensifying the competition in space exploration. So, get ready to dive into the latest groundbreaking developments on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Here we are, early November, just under a month since Flight 5. Many predicted we'd see Flight 6 before year's end, and now it's confirmed. I didn't expect it to come so soon, though. On November 6th, SpaceX announced the news with a tweet on X sharing a stunning new video of Flight 5. In the tweet, they stated Starship's fifth flight test was a seminal moment in iterating towards a fully and rapidly reusable launch system. But the true highlight was the announcement itself. Next up, the sixth test flight of Starship is targeted to launch as early as Monday, November 18th. They also linked an update on their website detailing Flight 6. In addition to SpaceX's update, FAA documents included a NOTAM confirming the initial launch window opening on November 18th. SpaceX aims for a 5 p.m. EDT or 4 p.m. Central launch at Starbase, marking a powerful milestone, the same date one year ago, which saw the launch of Flight 2. This anniversary highlights SpaceX's incredible pace, five flights in one year. If Flight 6 launches on November 18th, it'll just be 36 days after Flight 5 cutting SpaceX's previous record of 84 days between Flight 3 and 4 nearly in half. This is an exciting preview of the rapid launch turnaround we can expect as SpaceX continues ramping up their frequency. The signs for Flight 6 have already been showing up early. On October 22nd, just 9 days after Flight 5 and 7 days after B-12 returned to the production site, B-13 was spotted arriving at the launch pad. By October 24th, it had completed a successful static fire test before heading back to the production site for additional checks and system installations. Meanwhile, S-31 had already completed its static fire in September. With just the wet dress rehearsal test remaining, SpaceX is nearly ready for Flight 6. Based on the announced schedule, I expect this final test to take place either this weekend or early next week. From the FAA's perspective, the issuance of the NOTAM signals their agreement that a launch this month is possible. In fact, the FAA has already updated that the approvals for Flight 5 apply to Flight 6, requiring only consideration for new proposals. Since Flight 5 was successful without causing environmental issues or safety concerns, it paves the way for the next flight to proceed. So, ladies and gentlemen, Flight 6 is now just over a week away. It promises to be one of the biggest events in America following the presidential election. Are you ready for this flight? Let me know by typing let's go in the comments section down below. Then like, share, and subscribe to stay updated on SpaceX's journey, especially as we approach Flight 6. Next, let's talk about the key changes for Flight 6. In their update, after confirming the schedule, SpaceX once again highlighted the success of Flight 5. Building on that achievement, the company stated the next Starship flight test aims to expand the envelope on both ship and booster capabilities, bringing us closer to fully reusing the entire system. Key objectives include the booster returning to the launch site for capture, reigniting a Raptor engine on the ship while in space, and testing a suite of heat shield experiments and maneuvering adjustments for re-entry and descent over the Indian Ocean. This means the mission of Super Heavy will remain unchanged, with the booster set to be caught by the chopsticks again. I believe this flight will give SpaceX the opportunity to further refine its systems, optimize the capture method, and address the issues encountered during previous attempts, like the end of flight fire, damage to the Chin, and the near-aborted catch attempt due to parameter errors. SpaceX mentioned that Flight 5 provided valuable data to improve both hardware and software performance, and these lessons will be applied here. Hardware upgrades for this flight will add extra redundancy to the booster's propulsion systems, enhance structural strength at critical points, and reduce the time required to offload propellants after a successful catch. 
Additionally, mission designers have updated software controls and criteria for the booster's launch and return. While the option of landing in the Gulf of Mexico remains in place if something goes awry, everyone at SpaceX is certainly hoping to avoid that scenario. This test will be critical for SpaceX to build on its success and move closer to a fully reusable system. For SHIP, a significant change is on the horizon, one that was skipped in previous flights. For the first time, the Raptor engine will be fired up in space. This is a crucial milestone for SpaceX as it opens the door to expanding its operations, such as enabling ship to fly around the Earth, return to Starbase, and potentially land on the Mechazilla arm, which could happen as early as next year. Testing the engine's performance in space is also vital for future Starship missions, including launching Starlink satellites, building and operating a refueling system, and traveling farther to the Moon or even Mars. In addition to this exciting development, SpaceX is continuing to enhance its re-entry capabilities. The company shared, The flight test will assess new secondary thermal protection materials and sections of the heat shield tiles will be intentionally removed on either side of the ship in locations being studied for catch-enabling hardware on future vehicles. The ship will also intentionally fly at a higher angle of attack during the final phase of descent, purposely stressing the limits of flap control to gather data for future landing profiles. As part of this test, the heat shield on Ship 31 will not be fully installed. Instead, it will serve as an opportunity to test new systems. Likely improvements to the material used on Ship 30. The altered landing angle will test the flap performance, further pushing the system's limits. If Ship 31 can once again land vertically and intact in the Indian Ocean, it will undoubtedly mark a significant success for SpaceX. As SpaceX mentioned, the launch time for this flight will be adjusted to ensure that we can see the ship's landing more clearly during daylight hours over the Indian Ocean. Cameras will likely be installed on the buoys as they were for previous flights to capture this critical moment. In addition to this, SpaceX revealed another significant update. Flight 7 will mark the transition to a new Starship version, featuring redesigned forward flaps, larger propellant tanks, new heat shield tiles, and additional secondary thermal protection layers. This will undoubtedly be Starship V2, specifically Ship 33, which has completed production and begun testing. This means Ship 32 will not be launched, and 2025 will be the year Starship enters a new era of capability and design. These are the key updates for the upcoming flight. Be sure to keep them in mind so you don't miss anything as we approach this exciting milestone. Once again, let's go! It's no surprise that Flight 6 holds immense significance for SpaceX as it enters the coming year, especially given the fierce competition in the space race, particularly with China's ambitious plans. A recent report from Science and Technology Daily reveals that China is preparing to showcase a model of the Long March 10A, a single-core rocket designed for crewed launches at the Zhuhai Air Show in southern China on November 12th. The Long March 10A is considered the first generation of the Long March 10 family. It'll stand 67.4 meters tall for crewed launches, 66.4 meters for cargo, and have a 5 meter diameter. When reused, it will be capable of launching 14.2 tons to low Earth orbit. Its primary mission will be to send a new crewed spacecraft to the Tiangong Space Station. According to the report, the Long March 10A's first flight is scheduled for 2026. The launch of the Long March 10A will serve as a crucial step for China towards developing the larger Long March 10 rocket, which will feature three cores. This version is intended for the lunar program, aiming to send Taikonauts to the moon by 2030. The Long March 10 will be 92 meters tall and capable of launching 27 tons to translunar orbit. Two Long March 10 rockets will be involved in the lunar mission, one carrying the spacecraft, Mengzhou, and the other, the lunar lander, Lanyue. The two will rendezvous and exchange crews in lunar orbit. In addition to the Long March 10A, China will also showcase the Long March 9 at the exhibition. This massive rocket with a 10.6 meter diameter and four counts of five meter diameter side boosters will play a key role in future missions, including the construction of a moon base starting in the next decade. Though China may be behind, their roadmap is undeniably formidable. 
Now more than ever, Starship represents America's greatest hope in winning this race. We are planning to return humans to the moon in September of 2026, and Starship is showing encouraging progress. The vehicle has undergone continuous testing since joining the Artemis program, and we've even seen images of the inside of the Starship HLS. After five successful flights, Starship has made significant strides, particularly in landing using the Megazilla arm. Plans are already in place for fully catching Starship, constructing a refueling system, moving operations to Florida, and launching the uncrewed Starship HLS. What's even more exciting is the leadership of our new president, Donald Trump. With his administration, I'm confident that SpaceX's ambitious plans will be propelled forward with even greater urgency. All the winning factors are still within our grasp, so now let's go and make America great again. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.